Hey guys, welcome to the SLQ series. In this series, I tackle SPM-like questions. And in this particular video, we're going to be looking at probability. So stay tuned. If you want to learn the theory of probability, the links will be up at the corner as the video progresses. Let's get into the question. So this is how a question is normally asked in SPM. Please note that this is how it's normally asked. This is not necessarily the way it must be asked. It may be asked in other ways as well. So let's look at it. The diagram shows two boxes A and B containing cards labeled with numbers and letters. So this is the two boxes A and B on the right. We have numbers and letters. Two cards are picked at random. One card from box A and another from box B. So this is a combination of events. So first we pick from box A and then from box B. List all possible outcomes. This is normally the first question. List all possible outcomes. So first, when we are listing it, you have to keep in mind that we need to use set notation. S represents sample space. When we write set notation, we need to use curly bracket. So we put curly bracket. Let's look at all our events now. So we have to do this systematically so you don't miss out anything. Let's look at box A first. So let's say the first card we picked is Y. So you focus on Y first. Don't jump to 20. So the first combination can be y and 17 and then y and z or y and 6. So this is how we list it down. Each event, that means each two cards picked, we write in a bracket with a comma that separates the first and the second box. So y17, yz and y6. And then we go on to 20 and we do the same thing. So it will be 20, 17 as one event, 20z 20, and 26. 20, 17, 20z, 20, 26. Same thing with 5 and u. So 5, we have another 3, and u, we have another 3. So when you do it systematically, you won't miss anything. If you want to check how many outcomes you are supposed to get all together, multiply the number of outcomes in the first, the number of choices in the first instance by the number of choices in the second instance. So here there's 4 cards in box A and 3 cards in box B. So 4 times 3, a total of 12. All our outcomes here, we're supposed to get 12 outcomes. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so now we have all our outcomes. So this is the first step. Then, by listing, out the, by listing all possible outcomes or events, find the probability that. Now the second part of the question always starts like this. By listing out all the possible outcomes. A lot of times students will miss this step and don't waste your marks. So always be sure to list all the possible outcomes of the events that they are asking for. Let's look at the example here. So the first one is find the probability that one card is one card chosen is labeled with a vowel and another card labeled with an even number. One card labeled with vowel, another card with even number. There's another keyword to look out for here and that is n so when we have n for it for the outcome to be counted both must be there both the vowel and even number must be there okay, let's look at our sample space here and determine which one satisfies uh, these conditions so vowel and even number both must be there let's look at y y and 17 is an odd number y is not a vowel y is a consonant so we can already ignore all the y's because both must be there and here we don't have the vowel so this one we can ignore everything and then 20 so even number yes 20 is an even number but now we need to have uh, we need to have a vowel together with it so let's look at it so we have 20 17 20 z and 26 there's no vowel although there's an even number there's no vowel so we cannot take any of this then let's look at 5. Now 5 is not an even number. Again, nothing can be taken from 5. Because 5 is not an even number. It's an odd number. Now let's look at u. So u is a vowel. Yes, we have a vowel. And then we have we need to find another card labeled with even number. 17 is an odd number, not counted. Z is not a number, not counted. 6 is an even number. So the only one that satisfies both conditions here, that means... We have a vowel as well as an even number is U6. 
we only have one outcome that satisfies it. Here, in this question, it is not specified whether the first card has to be the vowel or the second card has to be the vowel. Sometimes they will specify. We'll look at that at another example. But in this question, no. So you don't have to see whether the vowel is the first card or the second card. It doesn't matter here. Now, when we are answering the question, the proper way to do it is we let event V1 equals to M. So we represent this whole event here as M. So it's easy to write later. Again, don't forget we have to list all the possible outcomes here. So here we already determined that this is the only possible outcome. So when we list it, we write M equals to, again, when you are listing the outcomes, it must be written in set notation. So M equals to curly bracket, we only have one event here. So U6, close curly bracket. So this is listing all the possible outcomes for this event, which we call M. But this is not the question. This is only part of the solution. The question is asking you to find the probability of M. So to find the probability of M, PM, we have to go back to the basic formula. The probability of an event is the number of times the event occurs over the total number of trials. If you are not sure about this formula, then click the link. I have uh, I explained the theory about how this formula is used and what all this means. So here, in our case, event M, there's only one outcome. So one, and a total, we already know, there is 12. So total, you have to look at the sample space. Count the number of events here. So this is one single event. So total, we have 12 events. So the probability of M happening is 1 out of 12. This is the answer for the first part. So again, two things you have to note. Listing, don't forget to list. Use set notation and then probability. Okay, let's look at the second type of question. So find the probability that, this is number two, one card is chosen is, or one card chosen is labeled with a consonant or label with an odd number. So in this case, we have or. Just now was n, now is or. When it is n, let's look at n again. When it is n, both conditions must be satisfied. But if it is or, either condition must be satisfied and we can choose it. So if we want to choose an outcome, we have to look at whether it is has a consonant or an odd number either one will qualify already so let's look at this let's look at this uh, sample space again so let's the first condition is consonant now y is a consonant so the moment one is satisfied you can choose already so all of y will definite all the all the outcomes that have y is definitely included okay here so for event B2, we choose N. Just now we choose M, now we choose N. You can choose whatever you like. X, Y, Z, any, any letter you want. Okay, so here I've chosen N. So I put N. So let's look at the sample space. So anything that has Y is definitely included. So all these three are included, for sure. And then let's look at 20. So 20, they want or label with an odd number. So 20 is an even number. So it is not automatically included, so we have to check. So 20 and 17, yes, 17 is an odd number. So we can choose this. And then here we have 20 and Z. So it's labeled, Z is a consonant. So yes, we can pick this, 20 and 6. Now 20 and 6 are both even numbers. So there is no odd number and there is no consonant. So we cannot, we must eliminate this. We cannot choose 26. So we only choose these two. Now let's look at 5. 5 is an odd number. Automatically, anything that contains 5 will be chosen because this is all so all three are chosen and then let's look at u u is a vowel it's not a consonant so it's not automatically included we have to check one by one whether the other one uh, satisfies either one of the conditions here so here we have 17 17 is an odd number yes u and z z is a consonant yes u and 6 now u is a vowel it is not a consonant and 6 is an even number not an odd number. So again, we cannot choose six here. We can only take these two, these two. So we begin by listing all the possible outcomes. So if you use set notation again, whenever you list, you must use set notation. Put the curly bracket and put 
all our events inside. So Y17, YZ, Y6, 20, 17, 20Z. And then this one is not chosen. Then we have 517, 5Z, 5, 56, 5, U17, and UZ. Okay. So this is, we have listed all the possible outcomes here in set notation. And then we have to answer the question. The, uh, the question again is to find the probability. Listing is only part of the solution. So in order to find the probability, we have to go back to the formula, use the formula. Here, the total number of events here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the probability of n is 10 over the total. The total is the number of events in the sample space. So again, it's 12. Same like just now, 10 over 12. Of course, this is not the simplest fraction. We have to simplify. The answer is 5 over 6. So whenever we are answering uh, questions to do with probability, generally the pattern is the same. They normally ask questions in this format. All you need to remember is use set notation. Don't forget to list out all the outcomes. First you list the sample space and then you list the events specific to the questions, whatever the question asks you. Look out for N and all. So when it's N, both the conditions before and after the N must be satisfied in order to be counted as a true event, to, to count that event in, the probability. When it is or, either one has to be there. When either one of the conditions are satisfied, then you can, consider, you can count that event in. You can consider it, you can include it in your calculation. And then the final step is to count the probability. So don't co forget to found, count the probability at the end. Probability, you just use back the simple formula, number of event over number of times event occurs over total uh, number of trials. That's it for today, guys. I'll be doing more probability questions. We'll look at other scenarios. But if you've learned something from this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next video.